The first thing you need to know before going into Gripshift is that it's not a simple racer. It manages to bring aspects from both platforming and puzzle games as well to create something entirely unique that it can call its own. The experience is broken up into a set of challenges, races and minigames, with the challenges providing the bulk of the gameplay. Each one usually consists of around three separate tasks in which to complete, such as beating a set time, collecting stars or finding hidden items. As you progress, each track gets increasingly more difficult in which to navigate, and once you're done with that option, there are a range of minigames in which to get stuck into as well, which soon become one of the finest aspects of the game. But what truly steals the show has to be the intricate and well thought out track editor that essentially gives you a never ending cache of content to consume. All in all, Grip Shift is one hell of a game that should be part of any PSP owner's collection. Hammering Hero sees players assuming the role of Gen, a young carpenter who is intent on stopping some rather troublesome locals from creating havoc in his town. Now the game is presented in levels, which are all bite-sized in their execution, making Hammering Hero the perfect handheld experience for those wanting something easy to pick up and play whilst on the go. It's essentially a side-scrolling platformer, with Gen being armed with a hammer, which soon becomes the standard way in which to take on enemies, as well as several powers which are all tied to jobs. They can all be selected at the start Part of each level, and the more levels you complete, the more jobs become available, which will see Gen taking up several different roles, such as a baseball player, a DJ, and even a chef. Now, all of these roles come with new moves and abilities, which manage to keep the gameplay feeling fresh throughout the adventure. Visually, Hammer and Hero is stunning. The lush and detailed backdrops all depict various areas of the vibrant town, with each NPC and enemy you encounter also receiving the same level of love and care. If Hammer and Hero passed you by and you were looking for something easy to pick up and play, it would be a great choice. Street Supremacy is a handheld port of the Tokyo Extreme Racer series and manages to bring with it everything that makes its home console counterpart one of the finest arcade racers to ever release. As you would expect due to the portable nature of the system, the visuals have taken a bit of a hit, but the minute-to-minute -minute gameplay is intact, and this is the real star of the show. The map lends a lot from Tokyo Extreme Racer 3, with a lot of the locations presented in that game making an appearance. From the C1 loop to Yokohama, there's a real diverse set of locations on offer which makes racing for reach all the more enjoyable. As a street racer, you start out with a limited amount of credits and must acquire a car in which to challenge rivals with. Upon completing these challenges, you'll receive currency, which can then be spent on further upgrading your vehicle or buying a new one altogether. But the main goal is to essentially take over Tokyo by overcoming each racing team that occupies one of the several zones that make up the city. In all honesty, it won't take players long in order to complete the central objective, but with a ton of side activities on offer as well, there is plenty here to keep you busy. Every Extend Extra is a sort of puzzle shooter that tasks players with overcoming a huge variety of levels that manage to take many aspects from a variety of genres and mix them together in its own unique way. Now you command a ship with one ability, that being to simply detonate yourself and start a series of explosions that lead to gaining high scores. Upon exploding yourself, anything that is caught in a radius then itself detonates as well and forms a chain reaction. The goal soon becomes apparent that finding the right position on screen in which to explode is key, and when the right moment presents itself, these chain reactions that you initiate can go on for quite some time, and getting to grips with it early on is essential in order to overcome some of the more challenging boss encounters that soon become a real highlight of the game. Now it won't be for everyone, but for those looking for something completely different, it deserves a playthrough. What Did I Do To Deserve This My Lord is a strategy game that sees players taking on the role of a god of destruction that must dig out a two-dimensional dungeon, make it thrive by populating it with hordes of monsters, and then fight off the invading heroes. But why are you doing this? Primarily to protect the partially psychotic overlord Badman from the several forces fighting for his capture. Now the premise is entirely passable, but it does nothing to detract from what the experience gets right, and that is the downright addictive gameplay. Now it does have quite a steep learning curve, 
but after playing through the tutorials and having a bit of time with the game, it will soon all become second nature. Your job is to essentially not only dig dungeons, but to manage its ecosystem as well. Each of the monsters you uncover have wants and needs, and you have to make sure that all of them are met to ensure that they thrive. Every piece of soil you dig up has a nutrient ranking. The more nutritious the soil, the stronger the monsters will be that come out when you dig them up. It's a neat little system that will manage to continually keep you on your toes throughout the duration of each run. So if you're looking for a unique strategy game on the PSP, what did I do to deserve this my lord well and truly deserves a playthrough. Coded Arms is a first-person shooter that takes place well into the future, where it is now possible to connect the mind to a computer network. Because of this, the game takes place in a sort of virtual reality known as Ada, that continually generates enemies and environments for those that enter. Now let's get the obvious out of the way. Due to the limited amount of input options the PSP facilitates, it can be quite awkward at first trying to get used to the controls, but to alleviate this problem, you can fully customize the controller options that allow you to cater it to your style of play. Because of this, getting around in coded arms instantly becomes a lot more manageable, and it's all the better for it. With the wide range of weapons from shotguns, machine guns and grenades, there is always plenty of options at your fingertips when it comes to dealing with the various enemies. Each location is randomly generated, which really helps the overall replay value of the game, as one run is never the same as the last. Because of this, coded arms is a game that will just keep on giving, so if you're a fan of the genre, this one is a no-brainer. Deadhead Fred sees you taking up the role of a recently deceased detective named Fred. After rubbing a mobster the wrong way, he winds up dead, but thanks to the efforts of the Kingpin's resident mad scientist, he is revived and goes off on a headhunting journey spanning a range of locations that have recently been overrun by the undead. Now the narrative presented won't win any awards, but it does facilitate the gameplay, which is the main aspect of the experience that excels. It all revolves around Fred's ability to swap his head, with each lending a variety of abilities to the player, ranging from stealth and life recovery all the way to shooting projectiles and shrinking in size. Each has their place within the game and come into play during many of the environmental puzzles that litter the adventure, as well as combat that in all honesty is the weakest part of the game as it does not require much strategy and simply devolves into a button mashing affair. Criticism aside though, for what Deadhead Fred presents, it does succeed in supplying an unforgettable adventure that deserves a playthrough by any fan of the PSP. Ultra Union is another fantastic RPG that came from the talented developers at Atlas. It is a tactical role-playing game that sees you assuming the role of a princess known as Ugdra. After the kingdom is attacked by an imposing empire, she escapes and gathers together a ragtag group of bandits in order to reclaim what was taken from her. Now the game follows a linear set of battles that all take place on a grid, with a turn-based battle system taking centre stage. As you would expect, a wide range of both magical and physical-based attacks are afforded to the player but with a slight twist. The goal of each battle is not always to simply defeat the opposing team. They can often involve just simply moving your team to a specific place on the map, or taking out a particular type of enemy. But it doesn't end there, as cards also play a huge role in battles as well. They afford the player a unique skill that can be carried into battle, and with so many on offer, it manages to add an extra layer of strategy to the proceedings. As before each skirmish, you are presented with a deck, and are left to evaluate which card is best to carry with you. Although Although not the best RPG on the system by any means, Uggdra Union well and truly deserves a place on your shelf as well. As the name suggests, Skate Park City is all about skating, more specifically skateboarding, and sees the player taking on the various parks that make up the city. It manages to take the very best from both the Tony Hawk and Jet Set radio games and mixes them together in its own special way. From the diverse amount of challenges to undertake to the insane range of tricks you can perform, Skate Park City feels like a well-crafted experience that is bound to satisfy fans of the sport. But what sets it apart from its contemporaries is a large emphasis upon combat and the way in which 
which the environment can be used to achieve higher scores. May that be by shoving rivals into oncoming traffic or using gliders to crash into obstacles and continue your combo with a manual. There are so many options open to the player that make playing Skate Park City an absolute blast. And with local multiplayer included as well, it's an experience that will just keep on giving. If it passed you by, it more than deserves a playthrough and would make a welcome addition to any PSP owner's collection. Brave Story New Traveler is an RPG that introduces players to a young man named Tatsuya. After his friend succumbs to a mysterious illness, he is visited by a voice that grants him the opportunity to save her. You are tasked with locating five gems scattered throughout the kingdom in order to restore your friend to good health. Now the first thing that will strike many are the incredible visuals, and they really show what the PSP was capable of, especially when in the hands of the right developers. Each character, location and enemy all come to life in a way that helps the experience excel. Gameplay wise it is your standard RPG fare with battles playing out in a turn based fashion. As you would expect a whole range of abilities are afforded to each party member who can all be leveled up over the course of the adventure and catered to your specific style of play through the skills in which they can learn. But the standout combat feature has to be unity skills which allow the player to team up with party members and unleash devastating amounts of damage upon the enemy. For those that love turn based RPGs, intoxicating visuals and smooth animations, you simply just have to buy this game. Well that does it for today's video, make sure to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with future videos and as always, thanks for watching.